On today's episode of Demystifying Medicine, what is a focal seizure? Let's introduce what a seizure is first. In general, seizures are understood to be alterations of human behavior caused by increased neural activity in the brain. There are specific symptoms that develop when someone is experiencing a seizure. For the most part, people who have experienced a seizure tend to collapse and shake jerkingly. In some cases, seizure victims will also feel confused and dazed. Seizures can occur for many reasons, which include fevers, low blood pressure, or drug withdrawals. Specifically in individuals with epilepsy, a condition that occurs when an individual has more than two seizures, one may experience seizures due to a brain tumor, brain infection, stroke, traumatic brain injury, and more. 60% of epileptic individuals experience focal seizures. Some triggering factors of seizure initiation in epileptic individuals may include missing medication, stress, fatigue, and smoking. Focal seizures are seizures where the increased neural activity in the brain occurs in one area of the brain. The consequences of the seizure depends on the area of the brain that is affected. Before we get into the mechanisms of focal seizures, let's first take a look at how normal neural activity works. The nervous system is a complex network made up of the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. The nervous system allows us to receive sensory information to coordinate actions and other responses within the body. It controls things like your ability to walk, breathe, and smell. Signals are sent across our nervous system. These signals are sent using neurons, which are nerve cells that transmit signals to and from the brain. Neurons are able to send signals through action potentials, and this causes the signal to travel from neuron to neuron. Normally, there are equal amounts of excitatory signals and inhibitory signals. Depending on the signal, a response may or may not occur. An excitatory signal will promote and allow the signal to pass through to another neuron, and this will result in a response occurring. On the other hand, an inhibitory signal will not allow the signal to pass through to another neuron, and the response will not occur. Neurons have membranes, and along the membranes, there are channels. Action potentials are governed by the opening and closing of these channels. These channels include the potassium channel and the sodium channels. Let's walk through what happens in each stage of an action potential. Pretend our membrane is like a subway system. Passengers on the outside of the train or channel are called sodium ions and passengers on the inside are called potassium ions. At rest, our membrane is at negative 70 millivolts. It must reach a certain threshold to get the action potential started or the train moving. The membrane potential is like the passenger capacity of the train. At rest, there is a certain number of passengers, but it is not enough to start the train. The first step is the depolarization phase. Here, the platform of the subway station is crowded with sodium passengers waiting to get on the train. When there is a stimulus, such as touching a hot stove, the membrane potential slowly increases. The sodium doors open and these passengers rush in as there is more space inside the train. Since more positively charged sodium passengers are entering the cell, the capacity of the train or membrane potential increases. When enough passengers get on the train and pass the capacity threshold, the train can begin to move to the next station, propagating the action potential. The next phase is the repolarization phase. Now the train needs to get back to its resting capacity once it reaches the station. At the next stop, the potassium passengers want to get off the train through the potassium doors as the subway is too crowded. At the same time, the sodium doors also close, preventing any more passengers from getting on. Since positively charged ions are leaving the cell, the overall membrane potential or passenger capacity is decreasing. The next step is the hyperpolarization phase. Since so many potassium passengers are leaving the train, the membrane potential or capacity of passengers become more negative. For a brief moment, the amount of passengers past the original resting capacity. The conductor also sees that too many potassium passengers are trying to leave the subway and the train is getting a little too empty. Lastly, the conductor decides to close the potassium doors so no one else can leave and we are back at our resting capacity. The train will not move unless another action potential occurs and waits for more passengers to get on. Now that we understand what happens in normal brain activity, let's see what happens during a focal seizure. When a focal seizure occurs, many neurons in a specific area will become abnormally excited. There are more excitatory signals compared to inhibitory signals. 
This results in repetitive action potentials in a single neuron. But what causes these repetitive action potentials to suddenly occur? The exact initiation mechanism of a focal seizure is still unknown and it's usually spontaneous. What we do know is that there is a prolonged depolarization phase. This means that action potentials are occurring one after another abnormally quickly in the neuron. In other words, there is rapid repolarization and then hyperpolarization where the neuron is being excited and does not have much time to get back to its resting potential. A second possibility is that if there is enough excitatory activation and decreased inhibition, many action potentials in other neurons in one area can go off at the same time. According to Bromfield et al., this may be due to positively charged calcium entering the neuron. This leads to sodium channels opening and sodium ions rushing into the neuron, which results in the production of repetitive action potentials. So to summarize, today we looked at what seizures are, which are alterations of human behavior due to increased brain activity. Then we explored normal neural activity and how the action potentials are propagated through the opening and closing of sodium and potassium channels. Lastly, we saw how focal seizures occur through repeated action potentials. For more information on the do's and don'ts of seizure treatment, please visit the official Centers for Disease Control's website.